In section one, we got familiar with the gear menu. There were lots of different options in there that you can use to customize how your company file works. And I want to take you into the gear menu now and into some of those options and show you how to customize some of those different things so that your company file works best for you. Let me go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and we will dive right in. I'm going to click on the gear icon. And I want to start over in the first column underneath where it says your company, you'll see an option that says account and settings. These are going to be like preferences or options that you can turn on or off or edit in QuickBooks. As we go down the tabs on the left, and we'll start with company, if you want to change anything in these different sections, just go over to the right and click on the little pencil icon and that will take you into the edit option. You'll notice here that I can add my company logo just by clicking the plus sign and that will let me navigate through my computer to find my logo. I could edit the name of the company if I like. Also, you might want to put in your EIN number or your social security number. You're going to use your social if you're a sole proprietor and you really don't have payroll. If you do have payroll, you're going to have to have your EIN number in here so that QuickBooks can use it to help you with your payroll. I'm going to hit save and that's going to save that little section. The next little section says company type and you'll notice the first thing is the tax form and then the industry. I'm going to click over on the pencil icon here and I want you to notice that you have the ability to add whatever type of tax form that you actually file when you do your taxes at the end of the year, you can add that here. Now let me just make a little point here. You do not have to pick anything here. As a matter of fact, if you do not file your own taxes, if you have an accountant, then I would pick other or none every single time. Your accountant will know what type of tax form that you file. If you pick any of these options, what will happen is when you're working in different places in QuickBooks, there will be an extra field that says which tax line on the tax form would you like to put this on. You're not going to have a clue if you're not an accountant and you'll just get stuck there every single time. So why see that field and get yourself stuck? I'm just going to pick not sure, other or none. And the other thing is you have an industry you chose when you first set up your company file. I chose professional services. You can change that if you want, but I'm going to leave that and hit save. The next little section you'll see here has to do with your company email. You're going to have your customer facing email. The difference is that the company email is the private email that you like different things sent to from Intuit, for example. The customer facing email is the one you want the customer to see and that can actually be redirected to your company email if you don't want to have to open 15 different email accounts. You can always have as many email accounts as you want and redirect them to the one you'd like to funnel everything into. There's a place to put in your company phone and your company website here. Again, you would edit that over on the right and the company address down at the bottom. Same thing, you can have a company address that's seen on the back end and then one that's called customer facing, meaning that's the one that the customer actually sees. Let me go down on the left here to billing and subscription. This is where you're going to be able to go in and upgrade your existing subscription if you'd like. You'll notice that you can subscribe right from here and you can see all of the options and we've talked a little bit about these before so I'm not going to spend much time on that. The next one on the left is usage. There are some limits to some of these different subscriptions. For example, when you're using the QuickBooks Online Plus and you need more room, you'll want to go ahead and upgrade your subscription. For example, the one that I'm using only allows me one user. If I want to add a user, I may need to upgrade my subscription. There is a number of items you can put in the chart of accounts as an example. It's 250. Just a little FYI, the desktop version allows you to have 14,500. If I need 251, then I need to upgrade my subscription. And then down here where it says classes and locations, you can have up to 40. And if you need more, then that's another reason you would want to upgrade your subscription. I'm going to go over to sales on the left. 
and there's several things in here that you may want to go ahead and work with. Now later on we'll look at customizing the look and feel of your different forms. For example, if you have an invoice and you want to add your logo or something like that. But these are some things you can turn on or off right here in your forms. For example, let's say that you like to invoice your customers and you want the customers to automatically have terms of net 10, for example. Well, currently they're net 30. Let me go ahead and click on the pencil icon and show you some of these. Here's where I could change this to one of these other preferred invoice terms. If you're not familiar with the ones that say 1% net 10, like these three, and there's 2% net 10 and 8, basically what that means is the customer invoice will be due in 30 days, but if they paid in 10 days, they can take 1% off. It's a way to get your customers to pay you early. If you have a preferred delivery method, you can choose it right here. Do you like to print things now or would you like to send things later? I'm referring to an invoice as an example. Here where it says shipping, if you don't ship anything, then you can go ahead and uncheck this and this will say off. If you do ship things, then you had some options down here where you can have sales reps and put in purchase order numbers, things like that. These are custom fields. You can also turn those off if you don't need them. If you want PO number, not sales rep, for example, just uncheck the sales rep option. You can have custom transaction numbers, and that basically means that if you want to put in your own transaction numbers, you can go ahead and set that series up. You can have a service date field. You can also have fields for the discount, deposits, or tips or gratuity if you use that. You can just go in and turn these on or off. I'm going to hit save right there. The next thing you're going to see is products and services right over here. And you'll see there are several different options related to that that you can turn on or off. For example, if you don't track inventory, you can actually turn off this inventory option right here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. There's also some options for late fees. There's also some for progress invoicing. And let me just mention what that is, just so you'll know. If you estimate jobs, construction is a prime example, you're going to want to take that estimate and turn it into an invoice at some point so that your customer can pay you. You do not have to pull everything from the estimate into an invoice. You can pull in 30%, for example, or maybe you want to pull in certain items that were on that estimate into an invoice. If you do estimates, you will want progress invoicing. There's a couple more options here. Let me scroll down. There is an option for messages when you actually email a form. So let's say it's an invoice, for example, or what they call a sales form. You have the ability to email it directly to your customer. You can set the default message and I'll go ahead and click on that one so we can see. You can say dear or you can say to. Notice you can have a merge field if you want to have their full name, their last name, first name. And you can use the standard message that you see right here below when you're actually sending out that email. You can also have a copy email to yourself every time if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and hit save down at the bottom. A couple more things I want to point out. You'll notice that there is an option for reminders. And I want to briefly tell you how reminders work. But before we do that, I think we'll go ahead and stop the video right here. Let's go over into the next section and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about some of these other options here for account and settings. Hey, welcome back. Let's go ahead and finish up talking about customizing your company file. This is actually part two of section two. Let's go back down to reminders. I'm going to click the pencil icon. There's a couple of options that you want to be familiar with in here. You have the ability to set up invoice reminder emails. For an example, if your customer is late paying an invoice, or you just need some reason that you want to remind your customer to pay that invoice, then you can go ahead and either use the standard message, or you can go ahead and edit the one that you see down here. And you'll see it just basically says, this is a reminder we haven't received your payment yet. You do have the ability to insert a placeholder, which basically means that anywhere in here you can put in the company name or the invoice number. 
and that would actually be a merged transaction is what they call it. It'll pull from QuickBooks that information. You can email yourself a copy and you can go ahead and save this when you're done. You also have options for online delivery down here at the bottom. You'll see these are email options for all of your sales forms. Your options for this will be when you actually email your sales form over to your customer, do you want to have a short summary show up in the email or show the full details in the email? You can also attach it as a PDF right here. And some additional options you have is if it's an online invoice, you can actually set it up for HTML or if you want it to show up in plain text. But you probably want to leave it online invoice. And then click Save. And the last one I want to mention at the bottom here are statements. And I'll go ahead and show you those options. A statement goes out at the end of the month. And basically it starts with the balance from the prior month. It shows all of the transactions that month and then what the customer owes at that point. It's really a gentle reminder for your customer to go ahead and pay you. Statements are not mandatory, but they certainly do help when you're trying to collect money. You'll notice that when you print statements, you have an option to list each transaction on a single line or list each one, including all the details on that particular one. You can also show the aging table at the bottom of the statement. And what that means is it will have a field that says 1 to 30 days, another one says 31 to 60, and another says 61 to 90. And that way your customer will know where they fall in that particular aging table. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And those are your options that happen to be under the sales. Let's look at the options for expenses. Expenses are things you have to pay, bills that come in the mail that you have to pay, for example. Your options are to show item table on expense and purchase forms. You can track expenses and items by customer make expenses and items billable, and default bill payment terms. Make expenses and items billable. Let me just tell you what that means real quick. If you have to purchase a product or service, and you want to make sure that you invoice your customer so you can get reimbursed for it, instead of just manually putting those receipts in the car or keeping them on your desk, QuickBooks will remember those expenses. And when you're ready to invoice the customer, you can just pull them in. You also have the ability to use the purchase order system. So if you don't use purchase orders, you might decide to turn this off. Also, you have this option called messages at the bottom. This is a default message that will be sent when you send purchase orders. I'll go ahead and open that one so you can see the default message. You can also edit this to say anything you'd like and then make sure you save it when you're done. The next tab on the left says payments. This would be customers paying you. There's a couple things you can do. One is if you want, you can sign up with QuickBooks to receive payments quicker by going through this little service QuickBooks has that's very similar to the way PayPal or Zelle might work. You just sign up for it. If you want to learn more, you can click here. And that way you can actually email an invoice to a customer, for example. They can click a button right there and pay you right then and there. QuickBooks will automatically be updated once you're paid from your customer. If you already have some sort of existing account with Intuit, for example, they have something called GoPayment or Merchant Services, you can connect it to your QuickBooks as well right here. And this is where you connect. And the last option says advanced. There's several things here I'll just mention briefly. If you want to have the first month of your fiscal year start maybe in September, you can actually go ahead and change this. It's going to default to January. Make it correspond with your real existing start of your fiscal year. You might have a different date for the beginning of your income tax year. So you can go in and change those. Your accounting method is set for accrual. When you run reports, you can run them on an accrual basis or a cash basis. Accrual basically means that as soon as you invoice, it shows up as income whether customers paid you or not. As soon as you enter a bill, it will show up as an expense whether you've paid it or not. If you change this to what they call a cash basis, you will only show the income once you receive the money from the customer 
or you'll only show the expense once you actually spend that money. I want to mention closing the books as well because this is an option that you'll want to think about. In real life accounting what happens is you close the books at the end of the month and you close the books at the end of the year. And what that means is if you want to make a change in a closed period, you can't do it. You need to make an offsetting entry in the current period. Your books are not closed automatically in QuickBooks. It doesn't remind you anything. So if you want to close them, you have to come here. You'll be able to go in and you'll be able to tell QuickBooks that you do want to close the books and then you can set a closing date. Let's say you set it for December 31 of 2019. That means that after you are working in the next year, but you see a change you want to make in 2019 prior to December 31, you're not going to be able to change it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. We talked a little bit about tax forms earlier. You want to make sure you keep that one. Also, the chart of accounts. I know you haven't seen it yet, but basically everything in QuickBooks will run through this chart of accounts and currently they do not have general ledger numbers. They're just a list alphabetical per each type. If you want to turn on general ledger numbers, you can turn them on right here. Also, you have some options for the markup income account and we'll address that a little bit later. Let me mention real quick the track classes and the track locations. Locations means if you have different physical locations for your business, you can turn this option on and every transaction that you work in, you can choose which location you want that to go to. Classes is very similar except it's not really locations. Think about this. Let's say that you happen to have two different divisions of your company. You might use those for your class list and everything you do, make sure you pick the correct option from the list. There's some things about forms where you can have it pre-fill automatically, automatically apply payments, things like that. You might want to look through that at some point. A project would be like a job related activity. You'll notice that you have the ability to organize all of those job related activities in one place and that is turned on. You're also viewing QuickBooks in the business view. There is an option to go ahead and also see this in what they call the accountant view. Time tracking, if you want to be able to track the time that you or your employees spend working on different projects or jobs, you have the ability to do that. You can also come down and change the currency. There's some date options and things like that all the way down here. That means there's a lot of options in here that you can go through and set. You're going to want to look through these. You don't have to get them all right away, but at some point if you want to set these, you just come back in and make all these changes. I'm going to go ahead and close that with the X at the top right, and that's going to take me back to the dashboard. Let's go ahead and now move over to Section 3, and I'll show you how to manage users. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there, and click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.